Sometimes people ask, well, why is baptism so important? Hello, I'm Phil Sanders, and this is a Bible study in search of the Lord's way. Today, we're going to explore the meaning and the purpose of baptism, so stay with us. In all the hurry and hustle and confusion of modern living, the Lord has the way. We believe that the Bible is the revelation of His way. We invite you to join us in search of the Lord's way with Phil Sanders. Welcome to In Search of the Lord's Way. We're here to search God's Word for the Lord's will. Please don't ever take the Bible for granted. It's not simply another religious book. It's unique and filled with God's truth. It's the only book that can teach us where we came from, why we're here, and where we're going. The Bible teaches us the words that lead to eternal life. The Word of God is settled in heaven, but it can touch our lives for eternity. If we're born again at all, we're born again through the preaching of the Word. 1 Peter 1, 23 says, For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable, that is, through the living and enduring Word of God. Oh, we're delighted you've joined us today, and we want to be a part of your life each week. Today we're going to complete our series on how we respond to the gospel of Christ and what we must do. We've talked about the necessity of hearing the gospel and obeying what God says. We've shown the necessity of faith in Christ and how faith is the foundation of Christianity. We've seen the necessity of repentance, turning away from sin and to the ways of the Lord. Well, today we're focusing on the need to be baptized to be saved. Few people doubt the need to believe or repent in order to be saved, but there's much controversy over baptism. People have mistakenly said baptism is a work that people do to earn salvation. Well, this simply isn't true. While it's true that we're commanded to be baptized, baptism is not so much about what we do as it is about what God does for us. We're going to study what baptism into Christ means and why everyone who chooses to follow Christ should be baptized to be saved. Now, if you want to study more about these matters, we're offering this little book, What Must I Do? Free. And it's yours, and you can have a copy, a free printed copy, or a CD of our study by mailing your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73083, or sending an email to Search TV at searchtv.org. Or you can call our toll-free telephone number. That number is 1-800-321-8633. We also stream this program on our website at searchtv.org. The Edmund Church will now worship in song. We'll read from Romans 6, 3 to 7, and we'll see what God says about baptism. Our reading today comes from Paul's epistle to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 3 through 7. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into His death? Therefore, 
we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin, for he who has died is freed from sin. That's a reading from God's holy word. Let's pray together. Father, we're thankful that in baptism you can bury us with Christ and raise us up again so that we might walk in newness of life freed from sin. And Father, help us to always be obedient to your will. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Webster's Unabridged Dictionary defines baptism as a ceremony or sacrament of admitting a person into Christianity or a specific church by dipping him in water or sprinkling water on him as a symbol of washing away sin. Well, this definition describes what baptism means in the English language, considering there are many different Christian groups that baptize in a variety of ways. But simply because the many denominations do things differently doesn't mean that that's what the New Testament teaches or that they teach all these different ways to baptize and that all of them are God's will. So what does the New Testament teach in regard to the act of baptism? What action does the New Testament describe? The Greek word baptizo means to dip, to plunge, or immerse. It refers to the specific act of dipping or immersing uh, in water. A different Greek word, rantizo, describes the action of sprinkling. Now, if the Lord or the Holy Spirit had wanted us to sprinkle for baptism, they would have moved the writers of the New Testament to use that word, rantizo, rather than baptizo. Now, after an exhaustive survey of more than 200 examples in Greek literature and ancient translations, an author, Thomas J. Conant, in his book, The Meaning and Use of Baptizein, concluded that the word baptizein, during the whole existence of the Greek as a spoken language, had a perfectly defined and unvarying import. In its literal use, it meant, as has been shown, to put entirely into or under a liquid or other penetrable substance, generally water, so that the object was wholly covered by the enclosing element. Now, when the New Testament speaks of baptism, the event described points uh, to an immersion in water. In Matthew 3 and verse 16, after Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. In John 3, 23, John baptized in the Jordan River at Enon near Salem because there was much water there. Now, baptism or immersion would, of course, require enough water to immerse an adult. In Acts 8, verses 38 to 39, Philip 
And the eunuch went down into the water. Philip baptized the eunuch, and they both came up out of the water. Now, whatever happened in this baptism, it took place while they were down in the water. Now, the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 6 and verse 4, Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Now, the likeness of being buried and raised in water is striking here. It's not an accident that baptism is a burial and a resurrection that leads to newness of life. Romans 6 verses 5 to 7 says, For if we become united with Him in the likeness of His death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of His resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with Him, well, when? When we were baptized, in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin, for he who has died is freed from sin. Now, baptism is that time when our old body of sin is crucified with Christ and done away with. It's buried. At that point, we're no longer slaves to sin. And when we are raised up with Him, we have new life just as the Lord Jesus had new life when He was resurrected. The resurrection caused the new life for Jesus. And our resurrection with Christ in baptism causes our newness of life. Before baptism, we're dead in sin. But after baptism, we are freed from sin and walk in newness of life. Now, commenting on this uh, passage, William Barclay said, Commonly, baptism was by total immersion, and that practice lent itself to a symbolism to which sprinkling does not so readily lend itself. When a man descended into the water, and the water closed over his head, it was like being buried. And when he emerged from the water, it was like rising from the grave. You see, baptism was symbolically like dying and rising again. And the man died to one kind of life and rose to another. He died to the old life of sin and rose to a new life of grace. There is a second passage that links baptism to the burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Colossians 2 verses 12 to 13 says, Having been buried with Him in baptism, in which you were also raised with Him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised Him from the dead, and you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with Him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. Baptism is an act of faith in the powerful working of God. In baptism, we demonstrate our faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we're united with Him in His burial and resurrection by baptism. Before we were baptized, we were dead in our sins. But in baptism, God makes us alive, just as God made Christ alive. Now, in making us alive, God forgives us of all our trespasses. Did you notice in this passage how God is active in forgiving us and in making us alive? Baptism is an act of faith on our part. The command in Acts 2.38 and 22.16 is to be baptized. Now think with me. Grammatically, be baptized is a command, but it's a passive command. Now God commands us to demonstrate our faith by letting someone baptize us in the name of Jesus Christ. Be baptized means someone else is immersing us in water. Someone else is acting on us. We receive the action. That's what passive means. Now, just as we receive the physical act of baptism in water, we receive God's gracious actions on us in the forgiveness of sins and making us alive. In baptism, we are born again or born from above with newness of life. And God is the one powerfully working on us. Baptism is not some work of merit on our part to earn salvation. No. Baptism is an act of faith on our part whereby we receive God's powerful working in our lives. Just as He powerfully raised Jesus Christ from the dead, 
God buries our old man of sin. God raises us up. God makes us alive. God washes away our sins. And God makes us new. Now, when people say, well, you don't have to be baptized to be saved. Well, when they say that, they've missed the point. If baptism is the time when God acts on us, then baptism would have to be necessary for us to be saved. So there's great importance to immersing as baptism. We should respect what God is doing to us by saving us in baptism or immersion. We have no right or authority to substitute sprinkling for immersing in fulfilling God's commandments. If God is providing salvation to us through our baptism, then shouldn't we be careful to abide by the Lord's commands? Shouldn't we cooperate with what He's told us to do? Sprinkling and immersing are different things. They're not the same. While many have sprinkled people and called it baptism for centuries, sprinkling for baptism has no basis in Scripture. You just can't find it there. Baptism into Christ is by immersion. Baptism by sprinkling is an old human tradition begun centuries after the New Testament. Obeying the Lord doesn't mean doing what's conventional or doing what's popular. Obeying the Lord means honoring the Lord to the point that you're willing to do what He says. Honoring and respecting God means you won't add to God's commands, take away from God's commands, or edit God's commands to suit yourself. You simply, lovingly, humbly obey the Lord. So, why should a person who is penitent and who believes in Christ be baptized? Well, there are numerous reasons. Peter told the guilty people at Pentecost in Acts 2.38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. People repent and are baptized so that their sins will be forgiven. Ananias told Saul of Tarsus in Acts 22.16, And now... Why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on His name. Baptism is the time when God washes away our sins. Baptism is the time we clothe ourselves with Christ or become united with Him. Galatians 3, 26-27 says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Baptism is a necessary act of faith. Placing your faith in Christ necessarily includes baptism. The faithful sons of God today are baptized into Christ and clothed with Christ. Now, we've already seen in Romans 6, verses 4 to 7, and Colossians 2, 12 to 13, that baptism is the time that God unites us with Christ in His death, burial, and resurrection. Now, in baptism, we are crucified with Him, buried with Him, and raised with Him to walk in newness of life. Since the old, old man of sin is crucified with Him in baptism, God at that time frees us from sin and its guilt. Baptism is also that time when we begin sharing our new life in Christ and with Christ. From that day forward, we are new people who belong to Him. His blood has cleansed and purchased us. We are no longer our own. We have been bought with a price. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 to 20. When we're baptized, the Lord adds us as God's children to the church. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Baptism unites us with Christ and with those who are in His body, the church. Now, to be in the church is to be in God's kingdom. Paul wrote, uh, that the church at Colossae, when he wrote to them, he said in Colossians 1, 13 to 14, For he, speaking of Jesus, rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Now, forgiveness and membership in the church or kingdom are benefits of being baptized into Christ. 
This agrees with what the Lord Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3 and verse 5, when he said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Well, how are we born again of water and the Spirit? Well, this is surely by baptism. The Lord says that without baptism, we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, in Christ, we have the grace and blessing of God. Ephesians 1 and verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Now, in Christ, we have the promise of eternal life. 1 John 5, 11 and 12 says, And the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has the life, and he who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. The way to have the Son is to respond to the Son by baptism when you confess Christ and repent of your sins. Baptism is certainly not the only thing necessary to faith. We've seen in this past month that hearing God, believing in Jesus, repenting of sin, confessing Christ as the Son of God are also necessary to obey the gospel. So then why is baptism so important? Why are we talking about its necessity? Because baptism is that culminating act in our obedience. Our faith, repentance, and confession lead us to baptism. But baptism is that point when God acts upon us, transforming us from people dead in sin to people alive in Christ. That's when we are born again and become members of the Lord's church. To talk about baptism means revealing how God unites us with Christ, saves us, makes us His children. Oh, what a blessing. Nothing else could be so very important for today and for eternity. Let's pray together. Father, we pray that each one who is listening and studying with us will come to know you and love you, will believe with their hearts, will repent of their sins, confess your name, and be baptized if they have not yet done those things. Father, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. The New Testament gives us many examples of people being baptized. The 3,000 who obeyed the gospel at Pentecost in Acts 2.41 were baptized that very day. In Acts 8.12, when the Samaritans believed the preaching of Philip about Jesus and his kingdom, they were baptized right then. They didn't wait. The eunuch in Acts 8 verse 36 asked to be baptized. It was urgent. He wasn't content to wait until another day. He came up out of that water rejoicing. In Acts 22, 16, Ananias asked Saul of Tarsus, Why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. In Acts 16, the jailer and his household considered baptism so important that they were baptized in the middle of the night. Why the urgency? Why the emphasis on acting quickly? I'll tell you why. 
Being baptized is necessary for you to be saved. It's necessary for you to receive the forgiveness of your sins. Baptism is necessary for you to be united with Christ and to become a Christian. The Bible never contemplates the idea of a Christian who has not been baptized. Baptism is not something that you do after you have been saved. Baptism is the time when God saves you. That's when God takes the blood of Christ and washes you free from sin and makes you His child. 1 Peter 3 and verse 21 says, Corresponding to that, baptism now saves you, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Baptism is how we appeal to God to be saved and to have a clear conscience. Have you been baptized into Christ? If you believe and you're repentant, won't you be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins today? We hope that today's study about baptism has been helpful, and we're offering a free little book entitled, What Must I Do? That's free, and it's something that we can send to you. We'll offer it free, this printed copy or CD of this message, so mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma 73083. Or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call the search office toll free at 1-800-321-8633. Now our programs appear on our website at searchtv.org. We also offer free Bible correspondence courses to help you learn more about God's will. If you want one, let us know. We also offer free study sheets that go along with our programs. Now you can download them free before each program or at our website, or you can call and request them. Now if you call, we won't beg you for money or put you on a list. We do ask that you please worship with the Church of Christ in your area. They're the reason that we don't ask for money. And if you're looking for a church home, we'll be happy to help you find one. Churches of Christ love and want guests and you'll be glad you worshiped with them. Well, we'll be back next week, Lord willing. So keep searching God's Word with us and tell a friend about our program. And as always, we say to you, God bless you and we love you from all of us at In Search of the Lord's Way.